Well, welcome to Kelowna, Brett Wilson. You're, uh, you're well known in these parts. Your reputation preceded you coming in and uh, becoming part of the ownership group of uh, Global Fitness. Well, I was proud to step into Kelowna almost a decade ago. We used to come here on family vacations. We did three or four years. Uh, and then ultimately, I bought a condo here. And then out of that, bought some undeveloped land, some developed land. And now I ultimately own this, uh, the Global Fitness Complex. It's been so interesting for me. I watched you on Dragon's Den, of course. Uh, got furious with Kevin. Noted you were always in a different, uh, on a different path than Kevin was in terms of how you dealt with people and, and your response and uh, some empathy you had for people coming to the Dragon's Den. And, uh, and then you pulled away from that. Uh, was, you know, what was behind that? Well, to be fair to the whole show and the whole concept, I'd done three full years, which was ultimately 55 episodes of one-hour television. That's a lot in anyone's life, and I wasn't using the show to develop my brand or to excite or uh, grab anybody's interest in any of my businesses. If you don't know that Jim Treliving run Boston Pizza, runs Boston Pizza, you haven't been paying attention, or that Kevin had his O'Leary funds, that Arlene had Venture Communications, or that Robert was an internet security guy, and then there was Brett. Well, I didn't have anything other than being an oil and gas finance guy, and I didn't want any phone calls. So I really didn't need to be on that show for the purpose of building up my brand. I wanted to be on that show for the purpose of doing deals. The first visible investment you have in our parts is Global Fitness. Do you, have, you, have you been invested in uh, some clone enterprises uh, before then? Businesses, no. Um, properties, yes. So I'm over on the West Bank renovating a 40,000 square foot building that Fabricland's moving into right now. I've got about 70 acres right next to Mission, uh, Mission Creek down by uh, Capital City News. And I've also got 20 acres next to Gallagher's Canyon. I have a condo here. And I think there's one more, <laughs> whatever it is. But so I know I'm heavily invested in terms of the real estate game. And I really enjoy that. And it's a long term cycle. And I enjoy the long term game where it requires thinking and strategy, not just money been here about 50 years, came here as a young boy, and uh, didn't personally enjoy the vision that you're enjoying in terms of <laughs> investing into the opportunity. It's obviously huge. Well, I had the privilege of speaking to the entire executive or administration of the city of Kelowna's um, administration this morning, and we had a kind of a dialogue and a conversation about what it is it takes for a community to grow, for a community to be great. And my comment was, make it visit biz <laughs> visitor friendly and business friendly. Both of those are important in terms of Kelowna. And then be responsible for infrastructure. Make darn sure that the roads and the bridges are in good shape, and then make it friendly as an environment for everybody who's coming here and I think Cologne has done a pretty awesome job of that. And one of the uh, most obvious issues globally, certainly regionally, is around water. Water management and water quality. Um, hundreds of thousands of people projected to come and make the Okanagan Valley their home in the next 30 and 40 years. Uh, what, what challenges do you think are in play that, that are absolutely uh, have to be top of mind going forward? Well, I'm actually a bigger proponent right now of trying to sort out some of those issues around agricultural land and the control that the province has over what goes on inside the area around and inside Kelowna with the agricultural land reserve. So I think rational thinking has to come to the table on that. And that day will come. And then the other area is the advances in technology in terms of wind power and solar power. Those are going to make huge opportunities for us in terms of being more efficient on the earth. And quite frankly, that will drop water consumption. Get it back, give it back is a big promotion uh, culminating today. You've been uh, getting the attention of the marketplace uh, for the last month or so. I gather about 600 people are going to show up today. It's a very big success. Well, we've been running now, we have roughly every six months, some sort of a, a major program. First of all, a year ago when I announced that I now owned 100% of Global Fitness and we'd spend about a million dollars on renovations, upgrades, and you can see them in here and they're, they're everywhere throughout the building. And uh, we had a pretty exciting time as we started to optimize every aspect of what we were doing. We had... Um, uh, we had an opportunity to upgrade the tennis courts, we upgraded the, uh, the yoga courts, we upgraded the fitness studio, we upgraded the cardio equipment, we upgraded the fitness, uh, the cross fitness area. So upgrades are continuous and they'll always continue as we keep a sort of state of the art in terms of uh, fitness. But the best part is our membership's up and they're engaged and that's really a big part of why. Tonight, for example, 600 people will be watching Tommy Europe and his work in uh, what will be Kelowna's largest fitness class. Well, I've read your book. Um cover to cover. It resonated with me as I've gone through my own life. I came to a certain point in my life as well. About the same age it came to you for different reasons where I came to understand that I'd been living my life through a 
through a, a different lens and I needed to try and redefine my, uh, what success was to me. Um, you, uh, you've lived that um, change in your life. Very much. I mean, there was a 10-year period, maybe it was 15, where I didn't come home for dinner at all. And I didn't come home for dinner because my family knew I was working and they knew I was working for their benefit. That's why I justified sort of the long hours. And then as my marriage got tougher, it was easier to come home after she was asleep. So come home at 11, leave at 5, and live our lives. Same house, same address, different worlds. And that was, that was wrong. But it took a long time to accept and understand that, and probably it was a lack of courage on my part, maybe my spouse, to deal with the issues of our relationship. And had we dealt with those, maybe happy friendship, family, the environment, the picture would have looked different, but it didn't. I was with some friends in Vancouver on the weekend. One of them's uh, in, in uh, a mortgage broker. Lots and lots of stress, and he went to work on Sunday. And I went down to his office and I gave him your book. <laughs> I said, you need to read this and, and try to find some awareness in this sort of writing. Well, for me, I kind of wish someone had kind of slapped me over the side of the head, which is part of the goal of the book. I mean, I've had mothers and fathers buy the book for sons and daughters, and I've had children buy the books for parents in terms of here's something to think about relative to our relationship. Because if it's all consuming and all you're chasing is the dollar, I mean, you need to make enough money to live. Let's be clear on that. But we have a society, as a Western society, where we're so hung up on the material trappings of superficial wealth. Bigger boat, bigger car, bigger house, bigger holiday, bigger, bigger, bigger. And what does that do for family? Well, not once do you ever mention, mention bigger smile in terms of how our relationships are going. And mm -hmm. so that's a big part of what I wish I had seen earlier in my life, where someone had said, you know what? Your father was a great father. You might not have been really a wealthy man, but your, perspe your perspective that wealth is everything is going to take you away from your own family. And I would have gone, no. Oh. But I might have thought about it a little more. Get it back, give it back is part of um, the Brett Wilson brand, isn't it? It's um, do something for yourself, but do something for others as well. I'm not joking when I say that charity is good business. You know, one chapter of my book is actually dedicated, if it probably says community or charity, is good business. And part of that for me is saying that it's an opportunity. A lot of people describe charity as an obligation. With great wealth comes great obligation. And I flip that on its head and say, with great wealth or great any business comes a great opportunity. And that's an opportunity to engage with your clients, frankly, your competitors, uh, your suppliers, the people you supply to. There's a whole value chain. And even the families of your staff and the people you do work with all value and benefit from work you do in terms of supporting your community. So I see huge value. One last question then. Uh, I read most of the things you write about, uh, and one of the things you say is define your own success. In my case, redefine. I think for many people, they get to a point in their lives where they don't know how, but they think they need to deal with that. So if I was going to ask you, how did you redefine your success, what would you say? Well, a huge part of it was for me, and again, I accept that it wasn't meant to be a complete shift, but rather a multifaceted approach. Wealth and the power that came with it was important to me because it gave me tools for doing charity work, philanthropy, and actually changing lives through business and employment and investment. But the most important thing I did through my rede redefinition of success was add family, add happiness, add my health to that whole definition. Because without your own personal health and without your personal happiness, you're really not of much use to anyone. Brett, thank you for your time. I know you're busy. Uh, w. Brett Wilson, one of Canada's great entrepreneurs, philanthropists, the owner of Global Fitness, and the author of Redefining Success.